Ladies and gentlemen, before Bishop comes, I just want us to be introduced to a great man of God. Mm. I think you know who I'm talking about. You know, there is somebody in UD that I feel that almost that the Lord has, has, has brought to us to help Bishop present his heart. I think I have not seen anybody who interprets the books that Bishop has written so much, with so much life and explanation and it's so clear. It's as if he wrote the book. And I think it's also because he's accompanied so much with the bishop. The Bible says that he that companies with the wise shall become wise. Uh -huh. But the, the, the lot of fools shall be distraction. So I think that his company with him has made him like when he comes, it's like the bishop has come. One time we were looking for somebody to have a camp. And apostle asked bishop, who should come? And bishop said, look, you want somebody to call this great man of God. And since that day that he had that first camp with us, I have just fallen in love. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you know who I'm talking about. Let's rise to our feet and welcome one of the most anointed bishops of beauty, Bishop Edwin Morgan Ogo. He's my wife's classmate. And so I cherish that relationship. God bless you, Bishop. <laughs> Clap your hands for Jesus. And he's also my senior in school, so clap your hands for him as well. Right. Let's be seated. We've had some time to pray. And um, I want us to rise out to our feet again and just spend some two minutes. Let's lift up our two hands and just, just commit this evening's session into God's hand yourself. Commit yourself. See, when I say this evening's session, I don't mean pray for all of us, but pray for yourself. Just lift your hands wherever you are, if it's possible, if you are not too rich to lift your hands or too pretty to lift your hands. Just lift your hands and pray for yourself that this evening, you know, there are many races. How you start matters a lot. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us to receive what God has for us, the great things he has for us, My major, major blessings, mighty things he has for us. Our lives will not be the same again. My life will not be the same again. Father, touch my heart. Father, touch my heart. Father, touch my heart. Father, take away that which pollutes. Take away that which, which distracts. I commit myself tonight, 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 tonight. The word is tonight, tonight, tonight. Pray, Lord, tonight. Tonight, let your will be done. Tonight, tonight, let your will be done. 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 Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Pray tonight, tonight, tonight. Do it, Lord. Tonight. Tonight. Let tonight mark a special time in my life. In my life, 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 in my life tonight. Do it for me, Lord. Touch my life tonight in Jesus' name. 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 Touch me, Lord. I don't want to be the same again. Touch my life, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. Lord, do it. Jesus, Jesus, thank you. Touch my life, touch my life, touch my life, touch my life. I don't want to be the same again. Tonight, touch me. I want to change. Keep praying in the spirit. Keep praying in the spirit. Keep praying in the spirit. I don't want to be the same again. 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 Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same, never the same, never the same. Never the same, never the same, never the same. Never the same, never the same, never the same. Never the same, never the same. I want to advance. I want to advance. I want to advance. I don't want to remain at the same place. I want to press, press in love. Press and Lord. I want to advance. I want to advance. I want to advance. Jesus. I want to advance. I want to advance. My life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, visit us and let your visit translate into a great change in our lives. Let everybody know that we have had an experience with you. want to see progress. We want to advance. Let that happen to us tonight. Let a major transformation be sparked off tonight. Let a major change be sparked off tonight. Let a major change be sparked off tonight. A change that changes our destiny. A change that advances our lives. We are tired of being at the same level. We want to move. We want to advance. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want us to consider this camp a great privilege of our lives. Amen. Amen. God is doing something very great in our lives. And... Um, how many of us are born again? Most of us are born again. <laughs> God is changing our lives. And he's taking us to a better place. The reason I asked about our salvation, those, how many of us are born again is that I'm very sure everybody here appreciates God for his salvation. Do you appreciate God for your salvation? Yeah. Our salvation is the most important thing that happens to a person in his lifetime. When you live for 100 years, Many things happen to you. Many, many things happen to you. And you, 
you, you marry, you go to good schools, you live in America. I mean, if you live in America, it means you are very close to heaven. <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of the great things. Ask your neighbor, do you appreciate the great things God has done for you? It's a great thing. But when you get born again, when you are saved, that represents the most important event in your life. Yeah. To be born again. There is nothing that compares, that comes close to your salvation. We need to cherish our salvation. And not allow anything to take away our salvation. Say salvation. 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 Yes, that, is, that is one big thing. Or it is the biggest thing that ever happens to a person. Your salvation. So, it is very important that we don't forget that we are saved. Amen. Amen. We should not forget that we are born again. We should not forget that we were in the world and God brought us out of the world into his house, into a relationship with him. Don't forget that you were in a family of how many people and God saved you. Amen. Amen. He saved you and he washed you and make, made you a new person. We, we, we have to treasure our salvation. Amen. Now, Numbers 16 verse 9 one of the very popular scriptures we know, very important scriptures, this is Moses speaking. And uh, something happens to you after your salvation. And that is, that is what everybody must aim for. Amen. And uh, Moses told some people who did not value a major thing God was doing in their lives. And he asked them this question, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel had separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle. Say the service of the tabernacle. Oh, I can't hear you well. The service of the tabernacle. Again, let's say it louder. Yes, to do, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. And then to stand before the congregation to minister to them. Now, tonight, something, a, a, a major revolution is going to start. And I cannot wait for, 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 the, for the ignition of that revolution. As soon as we see the prophet here, it means that something big is about to happen to you. I mean, when you see him here, you might just say that it has, it has started. It has happened. Yes, something very major is about to happen to you. Now, what is going to happen to us tonight begins with our salvation. Amen. And uh, what, is our, what, what is salvation? You know, one, one of the many, many, many... Um, 
explanations of salvation is God separating you from your friends. Amen? Yeah. God separating you from your friends. God calling you. Salvation is also a call of God. He calls you from friends, from your family, from certain relationships, from that boyfriend, from that girlfriend, from those evil people. And then what does he do? He brings you near to himself. Amen. Now listen very carefully. God's major work he does in your life is the work of separating you. Nothing great happens to you until God separates you. You cannot be with certain people and expect God to do great things in your life. So, from the beginning to the end, God's work in your life will involve separation. He began with Abraham and he separated Abraham from his family. Amen. Amen. Some people do not want to allow God to separate them. That is why many people have lowered salvation to just church attending, church attendance, church belonging. To them, being, being part of a church means you are saved. But belonging to a church does not mean you are saved. Belonging to a church does not mean you are saved. To be saved means to be separated from the world. To be separated from a life of sin. To be separated from many things. Many things, of course. We have the washing of our sins. The writing of our names in the book of life. We are doing revision of salvation. Your sins are washed. Your name is written in the book of life. God does a new work in your life. That is salvation. Now, it's a salvation that brings you to church. It's a salvation that brings you to church. Salvation is what makes you a part of a church. The church is a collection of saved people that God doesn't want to kill. He, he's still working on us. Because to be saved is not the end of your journey. There are still a lot of things God does and works on you for years before eventually he kills you. <laughs> But until we are dead, he is still working on us. Amen. Amen. Now, when he brings you to church and you are a part of a congregation, he still continues his work of separation. Even when you are in church even when you are in church. All of us have been separated from our different backgrounds and we are in church. He still continues the work of separating you. Which is what brings us to Numbers 16, verse 9. 
where in the congregation, you can see it there, he separates you from the congregation. So, first of all, we were separated from the world. All of us are separated ones. He puts us in church, in the Bronx, in Accra, Lagos, different churches. Now, in the church also, in the church, God continues his work of separating you. Is it my English which weren't good at this time? My English weren't good now. Do you understand? Yeah. When we are in church also, the work is still going on. And it is a work of the same work he did. You remember with your, you are with your wee smoking friends? You are with your fornicating friends? The fornicants? Name them. Remember your guys, your friends. Clubbing. All the things. You know. Then he separated you. Now, when he brings you to church, he continues to do the work of separating you. That this is where he meets opposition. This, 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 this is where we are believing God that we are going to escape. Yes. Many people stop God. They prevent God from continuing the work of salvation. They prevent him. They do not allow him to do the great work he's doing. The great work of making you great. Tell your neighbor, God wants to make you great. I tell you. You may think it's just a statement we are making. Or something, you know, cliche. God genuinely wants to make you great. I tell you. Look, greatness of the order that your university education can never attain. It cannot attain. I'm saying that the order of greatness, no institution on earth can elevate you to that level of greatness. No system. Attending Harvard will not make you that great. That is why Moses said, is it a small thing? Is it a small thing? You know, sometimes big things happen to us, but we don't know that something great is happening to us. Yes. We allow seasons to pass. And then when you turn and you look back, you discover that something very great was going on, but you couldn't see so Moses asks them, is it a small thing? Is it a small thing? So tonight, I just want to announce before our prophet takes the microphone that God is still in the business of separating you. There are a few of us who have been separated already. When you see a pastor of a church, you are seeing someone who has been successfully 
separated. Yes. I'm a pastor. God separated me from my unbelieving friends, saved me, and put me in a church. And 25 years ago, he separated me from the church. God does not want you to continually sit in a congregation. So sometimes he treats the congregation as something bad. You remember how he separated you from your company of fornicants? You remember? Is fornication good? No. Is we smoking good? Some of us have got that past social history. He separates you. And some of us are so nice that you cannot even tell that you had a certain past. You were a certain type of person. Now listen to me. Listen, listen carefully. Listen. There is a certain stage of your life. Being in the congregation is the same as being with smokers. There is a certain time of your life, it is, it is wrong to be with the congregation. I'm happy God had mercy on me and he separated me. When you get born again a week, two weeks, six weeks, six months and so on, you are allowed. But there is a time the congregation of the saints is seen by God as something you should not belong to. You should not belong to. There are some of us sitting here who have resisted that work and have lived stubbornly. And you are, you are mixing yourself with people God does not want you to mix yourself with. He doesn't want that. There is a time God does not want you as a believer to continue sitting. You see, on Sunday, when, when, when an aerial shot is taken of your church service and you are found sitting in the congregation writing notes like a journalist. I tell you that in heaven, you are seen as a Jonah on a certain ship. So God comes and he separates you. Now, the reason why God separates you from the congregation is that there is a certain stage of your Christian life where if you persistently stay with the congregation, you are going to be reachable by evil and sin. Let me repeat the English. There is a certain time of your life when you are still with the congregation. You see, being, being in church is a type of escape. When you are in church, you've escaped something. You've escaped. But, but being in church, sitting in the congregation is not the ultimate escape. So you see, there are people who got born again and have sat in church for so long that they have gone back to the sins and the things they were doing and are still in church. They have not left the church. They are in the church and have now resumed activities. Resumption of activities. Because when he separates you, he is trying to give you a channel of escape. 
So he separates you from your family. He separated Abraham from his family to make him a millionaire, to make him a man of destiny, a father of nations. There's always a reason why God separates people. Yes. To escape something. Many of us have got certain family demons. Family things. Which have destroyed your uncles, your cousins, destroyed your mother, your father, and all that. Some of us sitting here are actually immersed in some family things. Devils. You are in the church, but you are no different from your cousin who doesn't go to church. I mean, when we come to you closely and we examine you and we weigh you, you are not different from your cousin or your uncle. Some of us, you, you are I mean, a lady here, you look just like your auntie. Just like your auntie. Also, at the same age, just like your auntie, she, she has two children with three fathers. As if you are, you are, you are, you are acting a script. Do you understand? That is why, when, listen to me, being in church is not the ultimate escape. So as you are in the church, we are here, then he comes again and picks you. Like he did to me. And separates you from the congregation. And puts you in front of the congregation. If you go back to Numbers 69, you see that. He puts you to stand before. Is that holding? Is it to stand before means to stand in front? Because it's not a small thing to stand in front of the congregation. It's not a small thing. Yeah. The, 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 the distance from this chair to where I'm standing is not two meters. It's not three meters. It can be 25 years. It can be, it can be 2,000 kilometers. I said, it's not a small thing. You know, you know yourself, you can't stand up and come and stand here. If you like, try it and see. Yeah. Yeah. But when you come to church, everybody who comes to church and joins the congregation is a potential separatee. And many of us are not allowing God and persist in disobedience, persist in carnality until evil finds them. I've been a pastor for a few years. I've seen people who were sitting in church and evil came to take them out. Are you with me? Yes. Some of us are here. This may be your fourth camp you've attended. Sixth camp. Tenth camp. By this time, you should have been separated. And even when you are a pastor and you are among pastors, God continues to separate you. <laughs> I'm telling you. May, may he successfully separate you. I said, may he successfully separate you. Whether you are a young boy, young girl, old man, old woman, his, his, his greatest work in your life is to separate you. But immaturity, stubbornness, carnality, and I'm going to say something I've said again. Let me start there. Immaturity, stubbornness, 
carnality can cause you to remain with the congregation until evil comes to find you. I want to tell someone sitting here, evil is looking for you. And when it comes, it must not find you. Amen. Amen. There is a special protection for those who stand before the congregation, which is not available to those who sit in the congregation. There is a special protection from evil, from satanic attacks, demonic attacks, family devils, ancestral curses. There's a special protection for the people, the girls, the boys who stand in front. I pray that you will stand in front one of these days. I said, I pray that you will stand in front one of these days. Make it your vision to stand in front. And that vision to stand in front of the congregation is a vision which is in keeping with God's plan for your life. Don't continually sit there till evil finds you. Don't. That is why Everybody who comes to God, everyone, is giving something. Everybody is giving something that facilitates your separation from the crowd, from the congregation. It's called a talent, an ability, a capability, a gift. Everybody, everybody who comes to God is given something that facilitates your separation, your continual separation. It is not the will of God for you to die with your enemies. It is not the will of God when we come and we are looking at the dead bodies of your enemies, we shouldn't find you in it. You shouldn't be mixed up. Don't, don't, don't join them. What destroys them must not destroy you. Come out. Come out. Come out. You know, many years ago, it is at these camps that some of us had the privilege to become pastors, to do something small for God, you know, in our 20 member church, 30 member church, to start a church, seven members. At camps like this, we, we always received something that, you know, took us to our next level. Yeah. But today, camps are no more. centers and events to trigger the gift in you or the call in you. Today, camps are just social events. I'm, I'm talking about some time ago, many years ago, a camp, when somebody is going for a camp, that is a camp that made us Reverends and pastors comes. You hear something that separates you. But today, comes are not viewed with that eye of expectation that I'm going for that camp in Chicago. I'm going for the camp in Orlando, I'm going for the camp 
in uh, Nebraska. I'm going for the camp in Memphis to hear something that advances my spirituality. Today is just something social, an activity on your calendar. But what you don't know is that you are wasting opportunities. Jesus said, the prophets of old and the righteous men desired to see what you are seeing. And could not see. To hear what you are hearing. And could not hear. But blessed are your eyes. For they see. And blessed are your ears. For they hear. Luke says that. Quoting Jesus said. If you knew the things that make for your peace, if you knew the things that make for your peace, you would have responded to them. Today, we come just to hear and go back into our mundane, ordinary lives. But a camp is not a social event. A camp is supposed to, to, to precipitate your separation. You know, those who did chemistry, you will know that the science students will know that there's, there's a substance in the types of reactions. Many of the, one of the names you give something is a precipitate. Sometimes it's, it is crystals. Something happens, and then you see suddenly some crystals form. Some white crystals, something, something, science. <laughs> Precipitate. And many times they are different. Sometimes even a change in temperature can lead to the formation of a precipitate. Sometimes a drop of something, a drop of this, a change of this, the shaking of this. Something happens that always causes things to precipitate. And God wants to precipitate the real call in your life. He wants to precipitate your separation. That's why he brings you to a camp like this. Where you hear. You know, and in this book, many are called. Bishop treats This subject very powerfully in chapter 15. Ten reasons why people do not use their talents. They are given something that in using it will precipitate their separation. But they never use it. They never use it. Everybody here, look, look at our great and gallant pastors. And lady pastors, beautiful people. If you look back and go back in time, you will notice that all of them were part of congregations. All, all, till they met a set of conditions that precipitated their separation. Yes. And by being separated, they have become very great. They have become very great. They have become very great. Put your hands together. Let's welcome the prophets. Our daddy, our pastor. Keep clapping your hands. Your change has come. I said your change has come. 
Your change has come. You may be seated. The few days, the few days we have ahead of us are days of your transformation. By the time this conference is over, you should be looking for a space to start your church. Some of you should start calling because your, your branch is starting from this camp. I tell you, your, 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 your family members will be surprised. What, what has happened to you? Now you tell them that a conference happened to me. Yes. I heard something that changed my life. Yeah. And I, I, I have no doubt that through this conference, many of you are going to join some of us who heard the same thing and allowed God to separate us from the congregation to stand in front to minister. You will be a minister one of these days. Some of you next year by this time, you'll be at a convention preaching. You have never preached before. Next year by this time, you'll be pastoring. Yeah. You may not be pastoring 100 members or 80 members, maybe just 10 or 15 but you are a pastor because it begins small. So allow God to do what he wants to do. Don't be here as a stubborn Christian. Yes, don't be here as a stubborn Christian. I have no doubt that your time has come. Amen. 